Hello, in this video we will look at the carbohydrates restriction state during the diet. When we will we'll just eat the uh, just eat the fat and protein but restrict the carbohydrates. So the basically first of all we should understand about the carbohydrates. So basically carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and this is in the form of simple sugar or starch, amylose or amylopectin. So basically is the glucose, galactose and fructose that is the basic monomeric structure. Basically glucose and galactose and fructose. So the galactose and glucose difference on the hydroxyl, uh, hydroxyl group in the carbon number 1. So in this way the wheat, a milk contain galactose, sugar simple in the toffee as well as the uh, bread contain uh, amylopectin and uh, amylose and fruit contain fructose and uh, other things which that is contain a sucrose. So in this way the restriction will when we will restrict the diet. During eating the high protein and low fat diet. So in this way the carbohydrates will not per, uh, metabolize in our body and not absorb because carbohydrates are not present. So the salivary glands lubricated protein and fat but no produce amylase secretion. So in this way this bolus will go into the stomach and after the go into the stomach so the hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen um, will activate into the, in the form of pepsin for digestion of the protein after the digestion of the protein go into the duodenum and that is known as the chyme. This chyme is the basically digested food of protein from the uh, polypeptide into the oligopeptide as well as some polypeptide. So the partially digested food is known as the chyme go into the duodenum and further digest by the dipeptidase, tripeptidase and uh, other enzyme as well as the fat is also digested by a lipase enzyme which that is produced from the pancreatic lipase and chymotrypsin and trypsinogen will convert into the chymotrypsin as well as other hormone uh, um, other exocrine uh, enzyme which that will digest the chyme further in this way the after the absorption the catabolism will be occur so in this way here is the glycogen which that is catabolized due to the sugar is not present in the food but important thing you should know about that protein a uh, meat contain also uh, sugar but we will not understand about just you should remember about that we are getting the um, zero sugar intake so in this way the glycogenolysis and the adipose tissue will convert into the uh, triacylglycerol and fatty acid is known as the lipase enzyme is known as the lipolysis and both these products will go into the bloodstream so after the absorption the glucagon basically is produced due to the less amount of the sugar in diet will stimulate the glycogen to produce sugar by a glucagon so the lipolysis will absorb the free fatty acid and triacylglycerol into the um, uh, into the lipoprotein a glo uh, globule basically looking like this and this is the basically contain a cholesterol apoprotein and the lipids so basically inside is the lipid and absorption of the triacylglycerol will be increased in the blood and after this the uh, 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 LDL increase so the low density lipoprotein will be increased and this free fatty acid will be required for the heart contraction so the heartbeat is required for the free fatty acid will go into the heart as well as the uh, brain is also used the free fatty acid to produce uh, energy so in the form of ATP during the Krebs cycle so the amino acid is also absorbed because, because we are eating the amino acid we are eating the protein 
so that means we are just restriction restricting the sugar but we are eating the fat and protein but when we will eat the fat and protein that will be prefer and the free fatty acid into the uh, brain as well as the crepsa uh, as well as the heart so anyhow in this way the basically the free fatty acid is also convert into the glucose we will also understand and on the other hand important thing is that the gluconeogenesis will be occur and here is the amino acid will be go into the uh, tissue different tissue for growth as well as go into the muscle for prote proteogenesis and muscle building as well as bone formation as well as other growth factors so in this way during the eating of the protein will increase the growth rate as well as the sugar will not eat so it means the amino acid will be convert into the glucose is known as the glycogen glu 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 genesis so here i am drawing the liver cell hepatocyte it is also known as hepatocyte which that is very important for what basically is the ldl receptor are present in the hepatocyte we go into the apo b 100 and that will be uh, absorb endocytose the low density lipoprotein because the absorption of the fat from the um, from the uh, uh, digestive system is high so that is why the low density lipoprotein will be increase so in this way you should remember about that that will go into the into the uh, hepatocyte and when it will go into the hepatocyte the low density lipoprotein by endocytosis so it will become a breakdown by the enzymatically and in this way the cholesterol uh, will be dissociate and free fatty acid as well as apoprotein so i hope you make sense this so the apoprotein also further convert into the amino acid but it is rare because the amino acid requirement from the digestive system also so in this way the ketones body and beta hydroxybutyrate acetate and ketone and uh, glyceraldehyde and uh, produce while the amino acid also produce the keto acid this form this is the alternate way for the absorption uh, alternate path for the sugar requirement so this is the type of sugar which that is convert from the free fatty acid and amino acid so in this way the uh, cholesterol it will convert uh, will uh, excrete from bile which that is excess cholesterol but on the other hand the low density lipoprotein will convert the high density lipoprotein again for circulation so here is a free fatty acid will convert by the beta oxidation to produce acetyl coa and that is the also produce atp but gluconeogenesis produce the glucose why because the normal level of the blood glucose should be uh, maintained due to the homeostasis and in this way the glucose is important for the brain function and that is why the brain prefer more glucose but in this way the long term Uh, carbohydrate restriction will decrease the absorption of the glucose into the brain so in this way the normal level of the glucose in the blood circulatory system will remain constant and not absorbed but ketone produce which that is absorbed on the basis of the signal of low glucose level will in inhibit the insulin and this insulin inhibition will trigger the growth hormone for the growth of the muscle growth of bones so that is the important things on the other hand the excess ketone will be excreted through a kidney so here i am drawing the nephron this glomerulus afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole which become a vasa recta efferent arteriole will become a vasa recta for reabsorption of the water sodium and excrete the potassium to become a hypokalemia and on the other hand the water is required for the excretion of the excess ketones so in this way the urine um, uh, will uh, urine will absorb the ketones and 95% water 
and in this way here is the aldosterone will stimulate the sodium uh, in, uh, uptake from the reabsorption from vasodilator and potassium will be secreted into the um, nephron so here is you can see that aquaporin will be inhibit the antidiuretic hormone so the antidiuretic hormone will be uh, inhibit due to the aquaporin channel restriction why because the ketones require the water more so that is why important thing is that the water requirement so it will lead to dehydration due to the excess of the water loss on the other hand the ketone will produce from the respiratory system during the breathing out so in this way the ketogenesis diet will uh, lead to this function so i hope you make sense